Hello, this is Rob Hirschfeld. Uh, in this video, we're going to show you how to create uh, content. So tasks, templates, stages, uh, parameters, all the things you need to extend a digital rebar environment. Uh, this is a companion video for one that Greg Althaus and I did about creating bundles, where we show how to actually take the work I'm about to show you, bundle it, send it to Digital Rebar, and test it six ways to Sunday. So we actually go through a whole bunch of processes to do that. And I strongly recommend um, that actually might be a good video first, and then we'll show you how to create all that content here. But either, either pattern, we're just not going to be testing our code in this case, I'm going to show you how to sort of create the pattern that we're going to show you. First thing I need to do is log into Digital Rebar, so I'm going to do that. And I've got a basic system with all the bits and pieces. I just have one machine here, uh, and I've already installed the content that we're going to build. So I'm not going to build it all from scratch. You don't have to watch a whole bunch of cut and paste and trimming and things like that. Uh, and we'll make the color demo uh, template available so you can play with it uh, online as a, as a GitHub. Um, repo or a, a, a paste bin type thing. The, but the idea here is that inside of any of these systems, what, what we end up with is a lot of bits, pieces, and parts. Uh, what we're showing you here is actually a, a set of code that changes the icon of a server. So this is something that uh, I find very handy. So one of the things we added into the system is that I can go into a machine, I can edit it, and I can set its uh, color red in this case. I can pick an icon from the list. I uh, will make it a cloud. And in that case, I now have a red cloud indicating that machine. This is really handy. Um, if you have a lot of machines, you can indicate where they are. You don't need to do this for workflows because the stages of a machine also show up. So especially if you're like in bulk actions, as you switch through stages, you'll get live updates about what's going on with colors and icons and things like that. Um, and the same is true. Overview will show you things as they change, uh, go through changes and statuses and things like that. So we try to be very consistent with graphical representation of machine state. Uh, even though, so, it's really handy to be able to change machines and, and take other actions. We're just using machines as a proxy. <laughs> So if I was going to do that uh, just from the command line, which is what a task or a template really is doing, uh, in those cases, what, what I want to do is use drpcli. Uh, I'm going to use the machines. And if I list the machines, I'll see all the machines. Uh, if I just want to show the one machine, then what I can do is take the machine's UUID, paste it in, and I'll just be showing that one machine. That's still a lot of data. Um, what I really want to do is be able to say JQ, we use JQ a lot, and I just want to see the metadata for that machine. So in this case, um, what we've done is I've used the CLI to pull out uh, the JSON for that one machine and then further use JQ to, to cycle it down to just the color. And what I'd really like to do is switch this from red cloud uh, to something different. Uh, so I can, uh, let's do a uh, green leaf. Uh, so I can use the DRPCLI machines, and then if I don't know what to do, of course, I can just get uh, help. I want to do a update of the value itself. Notice the parameters, if you need to change them, there's actually uh, subsets for changing parameters inside. There's a whole bunch of things that, because we do them all the time, have helpers that let you more easily make uh, changes. In this case, we're just changing metadata on the machines. So I'm going to say machines update. Uh, I need to change that. Let's see what that looks like. Uh, so machines update, let me pull this a little higher so you can see it more easily. Uh, I need my UUID, so let me grab that. So you're right, I'm not showing you how to make a template yet. I'm showing you how the CLI works, but this is a first step. Um, and then we're going to sort of blow through all this uh, really quickly. But because this understanding how the CLI is going to operate is going to be central to actually building this in. So um, here's my update. I needed the machine squid, and then I'm going to build some JSON. Uh, so in this case, I single quote open, and I want to set meta. And then that in itself is a hash. So I'm going to set the color in meta to green. And I'm going to set the icon, close quotes, uh, to the leaf. 
and then I will close close and end the string. So if I get a little sneaky and show you over here, I, if you notice right here the, the machine is up. Here, let's try and take advantage of real estate. There you go. Um, the UX will give you live updates. So as soon as I submit this, what you'll see behind the scenes is you'll see some scrollers for uh, updates and changes, and then you'll see the, the icon change. Wow, that was fast. Um, so now green leaf update to machines went through the event system. So a lot of, a lot of data is coming back. Um, and to make all that happen, uh, this was pretty straightforward. I'm just changing the metadata. To actually script it out, I need a lot more pieces than that, right? What I, what I want to be able to do is I need to be able to create a stage. And that stage, um, because I want to, so I had a workflow. And if I'm going to extend, uh, these are all built-in workflows. Um, and they're read-only, so you could clone them and, and edit them if you want, but it's much more straightforward to just go in and say, oh, I want to add in a new workflow where I can go in instead of sledgehammer wait. Um, I could take out sledgehammer wait. I could go in and add in my color me. So if I, wait, I'm coming from VirtualBox Discover at the bottom, VirtualBox Discover to color me, add that, and then from color me to sledgehammer wait. Uh, makes perfect sense. There you go. So in this case, I I've taken a custom action. I've added it into my workflow, and then uh, I have a standard. Now I have a standard workflow that will always color set the server icon colors. It's pretty cool. Um, so from that perspective, pretty pretty straightforward thing to do. So I need a stage to do that inside the color me stage. Um, you'll see it's read only because I uploaded as a bundle. Uh, I need a task to actually do that work. Uh, and so because that's stages operating tasks so inside the color me sorry I could have done it from here color me uh, the color demo task if I jump over to that that color demo task has uh, a template and you can embed templates into the task but in, we encourage reuse so it's nice to decompose these things into smaller and smaller units um, and then it has parameters and we'll talk about that also uh, so the template then drills into actual work being done. And I'll, I have that code on, in another window and we'll, we'll build that code together so you can see what's supposed to be going on. And this is a, where a lot of the work is done, uh, but you have to build down to that template. Uh, in this case, we're actually gonna, uh, since I have it built, I'm gonna walk, walk you backwards through that process, uh, which is super handy. Okay, so I think we're pretty well set to go ahead and, and run that, that process. Once again, if you watch our bundler demo, um, you will see the, us actually testing this code and, and making things go. Fundamentally, um, what I'm going to do is I want to take this CLI command, which I know works, and I want to make a template out of it. And, and it's, it's about that straight, straightforward. Whoops. But I have to be able to cut and paste correctly. All right, so what I, what I really want to be able to do is take this command line and turn it into a bash script, right? So I'd want to have, I want to have a script up here, right? Bin bash with environment variables. And you'll watch me cut and paste more of this, but that's, this is the basics. And if I ran this, if I, if I created a template that did this, it would work every time, but only for this one machine, which is not that useful. Um, and it would, it would be hard to troubleshoot because it's just this one thing that's running, right? So what I'd, I'd really like to be able to do is echo some start and echo some end. That's good. So that helps me. But then I can't make a generic template using this. I actually need a machine ID. So I'd have to put in something like a rocket skates uh, GUID, right? So this is my machine ID. And then doing the meta like colors here like that. I really don't want to do that. I actually want to be able to say color and icon. Right. And so this would allow me to then do the right thing. So at, at this point, I have a generic command, but I have environment variables that I don't know. I don't know how to populate. So this is pretty straightforward, right? I have a script. It works. But to make it generic, I need some information. And this is where I'm going to jump over to the, the script we wrote. 
you'll see right here, here's where I was, right? Echo, starting, setting the color, echo finished. And so the work is actually in between those lines. And it's DRP machines update. Here's our UUID. And then here's the actual thing that I, I need to set. And then even down to, I'm pruning out some of the JQ, some of the responses, so my logs are, are more terse, just the way I showed you in the command I was giving you. Oh, that's pretty, pretty simple. If we go up, it gets a little bit more fun. This is where we start doing things like actually collecting the data. So here, this is setting the icon to server. So I could just leave it like this and make it generic. Instead, what we're doing is we're doing some template side expansion, server side or service side template expansion. And so we're saying if the parameter exists in the system, color demo icon, then set it. You pull the parameter out, color demo icon. If it doesn't exist, set it to a default. So this means this, the, the system's always gonna be able to set black and server as defaults if you haven't set the parameters for the machine through on the machine or on the profile. Once again, something we show in the, in the next video on how to do that. And then we've created this generic setup template that pulls in a whole bunch of things that make sure like DRP CLI is set, uh, sort of all these standard things that we build into every template that we build. So we just created a template for it. Once again, double curly braces mean it's a template side action. So this template brings in that template. I'll actually show you that. If I jump over to the templates view, you will see, I have to be on the second page. Here's setup. And this setup template is just running through standard, hey, let's make sure we have uh, DRP CLI, some helper scripts, um, things like that. Pretty straightforward stuff. You can actually see what it is. And once again, it's read only. So if we find bugs in it, uh, and you, when you update the, the content that this came from, you'll get an update for that. It's pretty handy like that. So back to my code. Um, that brings in all the setup. And then this is pretty standard. You'll see it in most of our templates, the UUID for the machine. RS Rocket Skates is the original code name for digital rebar uh, provision. And it's getting the UUID. Anytime there's curly braces, this means it's a service side expansion. So the, the script is built from the server with all these values filled in. It's not, it's not like the exports, which are, filled, which are done on the machine itself. So there's processing happening in two places. This list of all these substitution expansion variables is in our docs uh, under provisioning models. So if you dig down into provisioning models, what you'll see is there's a, a lot of documentation about how to render templates. And then we have a lot of different pieces of information. This scrolls for quite a while um, about different pieces of information, tokens, uh, templates. You can have templates that expand templates based on variables. Um, it's just glang, uh, uh, Golang template, templates, and uh, so there's a lot of capabilities that are embedded in that to make decisions and just uh, all service side. All right, so now let me go back to this. This is my script, uh, and so when I run that script, it's going to basically just execute this one line. Uh, all handy. That's pretty straightforward. Um, and scripts are, are templates are, are easy because uh, they're just text. So if you want to grab a template, you just if you want a new template, you can just take this. You can start as a whoops, start as a new file, and um, basically you know grab whatever you want and then start cutting, pasting, changing however you however you want to do it. Uh, there's sort of a special type of object for us um, inside of that template. Remember, it's being executed by a task. Uh, so the task uh, is more like a traditional digital rebar object. It's going to have a name. It's going to have some metadata attached to it. So I can set the color and the icon of that object, a description. Um, it's going to have optional or required parameters. Uh, and if, if there can be required, like when we do an API call and you need a key or a token, that's a required parameter. We actually have safe defaults for color and icon, so we made them optional. And this is YAML. Uh, and then for our list of templates that we want to include, we're, we're using an ID base. So this is saying, go get that template from the system. 
call it and call it that. Uh, and what ends up happening in these cases, if I go to jobs and I look at my color setter, which I think is now color demo, uh, you can actually see I've run the, this multiple times, uh, recording the other video about how we how we get things going. Um, but this is this is basically running our our task. Uh, a job can have mul a, a task can have multiple templates in it, um, just like stages can have multiple tasks. So you can start building up more and more pieces and steps as, as you modularize or consolidate uh, your code, uh, but still have small tasks, uh, small templates, uh, which we strongly encourage from a troubleshooting perspective, because each one gets run independently. So uh, we need to go back to our color setter demo task. So this is, this is what I'm looking at. This is the JSON for it, JSON's a pain to edit. Uh, you'll notice that when we do development, we're doing it in YAML. If you need to get the YAML for a task, that is easy. Uh, what I can do is I can do a DRP CLI. Uh, in this case, we want to get the tasks. Uh, show me the color demo task. Whoops. Uh, obviously got the wrong name. Color demo, the name of this task is name here, color demo setter. That's the whole task. If I actually want it in YAML, then I can say uh, format equals YAML. And the CLI will convert it to YAML for me. You'll notice if you look at this carefully, uh, there's a couple of things that we don't include in the source, uh, available errors, uh, required only, uh, read only, um, and, you know, if I don't need it, like required templates and validated, these are system added, uh, some of them are feature added, some of them are just empty, and so I omit them from the code, right? This is going to go into Git. I don't add things that, that the system is going to set, uh, that'll cause errors, and if it's blank, I'll, I'll omit it. You, of course, can leave it with empty quotes or a, a close, open close bracket for an empty list, uh, if you want to have that for it to be more declarative. It's really a matter of style. But in this case, what we did to build this library out is we found examples that we wanted to use and then we piped them into um, you know, new, new classes so that we could use them. There is, a, there is a hierarchy. So if you look at what we've built, um, there is actually, this is the bundled version that has everything in it. I'll show you that. And then parameter stages keys all have subdirectories and then the bundler actually builds, here's my parameters, stages, it's pretty straightforward, just mirrors the tree into a giant YAML to, for import. And then all of, so this is dynamically generated by bundle, everything else you would throw into your, your code control system so that you could manage it. Uh, there are some hidden files in here, the name of the bundle, uh, source of the bundle, version, description, all get um, set from those, those additional dot files. Here it is at the very top uh, and you can create those uh, yourself they don't have care they don't have line endings uh, so be careful but you can just echo out um, what's going on and then you can set the version however you want remember you have you still have to bundle after you make any edits and upload uh, for that synchronization okay so uh, from there this is my task and then my task gets called by a stage. So this is, a, you might build this in the opposite direction, it just depends on where your, your comfort is. It's fun to show it to you from the task, the template up, because that's really where you're doing work. So for this, this uh, session, I thought it would be smart to show you the, doing the work and then building back upwards, uh, at wrapping it with the task and then putting a stage around it. Uh, so in this case, the stage is very simple. It just has this task. You could create multiple tasks and then have your stages work with different tasks. Um, totally feasible to do it in different ways. Uh, runner wait means after this is done, the runner stays around to see if there's more work. If you want the runner to go away, then set that to false and it becomes the end of the runner's ability to pick up new work. It's sort of the dead end of your workflow. If you set this to, to, if you set this to false, in the middle of a workflow, the rest of the workflow is not going to go because um, the system's going to going to fail. There's documentation about what a lot of these fields mean. 
And then the th other thing to go back and think through is in our tasks we had optional parameters. So parameters uh, can be defined. They don't have to be defined uh, in advance. Um, you can leave them ad hoc, but it's very helpful to define them in advance. Uh, and you'll notice the ones that come in through the bundling system, all are read-only, the ones I've created end up with locks and clever names. Uh, and once again, you can set icons uh, and parameters on, on these as well. So if you look at Color Demo, it has two icons here, uh, and they're, they're typed. So to make those come in, so that's what I'm, I'm creating. If you make them required or optional in, the, in, a, in a task, you must define them. Um, it's, it's part of the checks that we do to, to have things work correctly. Um, and it's part of, whoops, that's not what I wanted. And it's part of the uh, overall process to make, make things go. So if you wanted to find parameters, same process, you export them from YAML. Uh, in this case, parameters are very, very simple. They use a JSON schema pattern. Uh, so type string here, metadata is the biggest thing, and then their name. Uh, is it okay to have slashes? We like to use this to help group parameters together so that it makes them a little bit easier to track. So you'll see that as a common naming. It's not required, but it's a common naming pattern for us. Um, sort of organize our parameters. Uh, and with that, I've basically created all of the bits and pieces that you would need to uh, create your own uh, Temp, uh, set of workflow additions for a digital rebar infrastructure. Uh, it ends up being pretty straightforward. Um, and then check out the bundling video where we actually take this work, upload that bundle, and then test and change the command, take you through some versions. Uh, the bonus on that is that Greg Althaus uh, is my wingman there. Um, actually, I'm his wingman. Uh, That's a better way to say it. But we walk through how everything uh, goes and how you can test and show and check what things are going. My goal here was really just to show you the structure of what goes into a bundle and how you would create that on your own. I hope this is helpful. If you have questions, please jump into our, our Slack community. Uh, you know, we're happy to help. Uh, we're always working to make the documentation better and we take pull requests on documentation. Um, if you want, once again, all these expansion keys are, are in the docs uh, under the provisioning models section. Thank you very much.